So folks, I've said this so many times, but it's especially applicable today. When Trump has a scandal, it doesn't just take him down, it takes down every single one of his cronies in a 100 mile radius of that buffoon's criminality. So hit the like and subscribe button as we track the latest episode in that affair. And it has everything to do with a brand new bombshell, a brand new takedown in the Trump Russia investigation, a new person taken down and handcuffed, but it's also an exposure of the whataboutism Trump is trying to pull, and it just ruined the career and took away the committee ship of Jim Jordan, who has lost his committee today, who has lost everything, who has been taken down by Capitol Police as well because of the revelations today, because he tried to pull a fast one tried to make this all about Donald Trump and trying to weaponize the, the, the Congress to protect Trump and to attack his enemies. But what happened today was not only an exposure of Jim Jordan and not only exposure of the BS they've tried to sling at everyone from Biden to Clinton and everyone in between, but also a deep exposure of Trump's criminality now but also over the past decade. Watch this. It is Democratic Congress people tearing into Trump and his Durham Patsy and Jim Jordan in a glorious takedown. Every second essential. California is recognized. Mr. Durham, uh, just so people remember what this is all about, let me ask you. The Mueller investigation revealed that Russia interfered in the 2016 election in sweeping and systemic fashion, correct? That's correct. And Russia did so through a social media campaign that favored Donald Trump and disparaged Hillary Clinton, correct? As the report says, yes. And Mueller found that a Russian intelligence service hacked computers associated with the Clinton campaign and then released the stolen documents publicly. Is that right? That report speaks for itself as well. Mueller also reported that though he could not establish the crime of conspiracy beyond a reasonable doubt, he also said, quote, a statement that the investigation did not establish certain facts does not mean there was no evidence of those facts. That also appears in the report, doesn't it? It's the language of that effect, yes. In fact, you cited that very statement in your own report, did you not? As a way of distinguishing be between proof beyond a reasonable doubt and evidence that falls short of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Correct. As an illustration of this, both Mueller and congressional investigations found that Trump's campaign chairman Paul Manafort was secretly meeting with an operative linked to Russian intelligence named Konstantin Kalimnik, correct? That's my understanding, yes. And that Manafort, while chairman of the Trump campaign, gave that Russian intelligence operative the campaign's internal polling data, correct? That's what I've read in the news, yes. And that Manafort provided this information to Russian intelligence while Russian intelligence was engaged in that social media campaign and the release of stolen documents to help the Trump campaign, correct? You may be getting beyond uh, depth of my knowledge, but... It's well, let me, let me say very simply, while Manafort, the campaign chairman for Donald Trump, was giving this Russian intelligence officer internal campaign polling data, Russian intelligence was helping the Trump campaign, weren't they? I, I, don't, I don't know that. You I really don't, don't know right. those very basic facts of the investigation? I know the general um, facts, yes. Do I know that particular fact myself? No. I mean, I know that I've read that in the media. And are you aware, uh, Mr. Durham, that Mueller and congressional investigations also revealed that Don Jr. was informed that a Russian official was offering the Trump campaign, quote, very high level and sensitive information, unquote, that would be incriminating of Hillary Clinton was part of, quote, Russia and its government support of Mr. Trump? Are you aware of that? Sure, people get phone calls all the time from uh, individuals who claim to have information like that. Really, the son of a presidential get candidate gets calls all the time from a foreign government offering dirt on their opponent? opponent? Is that what you're saying? I don't think this is unique in your experience. Uh, so you, uh, you have other instances of the Russian government offering dirt on uh, a presidential candidate to the presidential candidate's son. Is that what you're saying? Would you repeat the question? Uh, you said that it's not uncommon to get offers of help from a hostile foreign government, a presidential campaign directed at the president's son. You really stand by that, Mr. Durham? I'm saying that, it, that people can make phone calls um, making uh, claims uh, all the time that you may have experienced. Are you really trying to diminish the significance of what happened here 
and the secret meeting that the president's set, son set up in Trump Tower to receive that incriminating information, trying to diminish the significance of that, Mr. Turner? We're not trying to diminish it at all, but I think the more complete story is that they met and it was a ruse and they didn't talk about Mrs. Clinton. Uh, and, and you think it's insignificant that he had a secret meeting with the Russian delegation for the purpose of getting dirt on Hillary Clinton and the only disappointment expressed in that meeting was that the dirt they got wasn't better. You don't think that's significant? I don't think that that was a well-advised thing to do. Oh, no. oh, not, not well-advised. Right. Well, that's, that's the understatement of the year. So you think it's perfectly appropriate or, or maybe just ill-advised for a presidential campaign to secretly meet with a Russian delegation to get dirt on their opponent? You would merely say that's inadvisable? Yeah, if you're asking me what I do, and I, don't, I hope I wouldn't do it, but it's, it was not illegal. Uh, it, was, it was stupid, foolish, ill-advised. Well, it, it is illegal to conspire to get uh, incriminating opposition research from a hostile government that is of financial value to a campaign. Wouldn't that violate campaign laws? I don't know. I don't know all those facts to be true. Well, your report, Mr. Durham, doesn't dispute anything Mueller found, did it? No, our, our object, our aim was not to dispute Director Mueller. I have the greatest regard, highest regard for Director Mueller. He's a patriot. The only distinguishment between his investigation and yours <coughs> is he refused to bring charges where he couldn't prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, and you did. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Durham, your report reads like a defense of the Trump campaign and an attack on Hillary Clinton because that's exactly what it is. Donald Trump wanted you to investigate the investigators to show the deep state conspiracy, but you never found one. Instead, you gave him and his MAGA Republicans the next best thing, someone else to blame for Donald Trump's problems. That's why you're here today, because the chairman and his colleagues need someone, anyone, to deflect from the mounting evidence of Trump's misconduct. Let me remind you that Donald Trump was federally indicted on 37 counts for mishandling classified information, 37 counts. That's why you're here today, not because of anything that happened in 2016. Ms. Durham, your investigation cost more than six and a half million dollars, involved the work of dozens of FBI employees and federal prosecutors, some of whom resigned in protest and took roughly four years to complete. Is that correct? No. It's not correct. No, I mean, there were multiple did, parts of that. Did it take four years to complete? Correct. Okay. And with all these resources and all these people you, you were sent to help you investigate the investigators, you only filed three criminal cases. You only brought two cases to trial, correct? Correct. And you lost all the cases you brought to trial, correct? Correct. In fact, two juries acquitted your defendants on all charges. And the one conviction that you obtained, the defendant pleaded guilty to a single count that never went to trial, correct? Correct. I will note that in that case, the primary investigative steps were all completed by Inspector General Horowitz. Perhaps you were better when it came to your report. From my reading, your report did not make any specific concrete recommendations to improve DOJ or FBI policies or procedures. In fact, your report repeatedly references the recommendations made by Inspector General Horowitz, almost all of which DOJ and FBI have already implemented. Again, your investigation lasted four years. Four years in untold sums of money, and you still obtained only one conviction. You did produce a 300-page report, though, and that's given my Republican counterparts plenty of material to spin. Mr. Durham, George Papadopoulos was a foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign in spring 2016. Isn't that right? Correct. I thank you for yielding. Uh, one of my colleagues on the Republican side of the aisle took issue with my saying that the Trump campaign invited Russian help, received Russian help, made use of it, and then lied about it. So let's break this down. Uh, let's go to invited Russian help. Uh, Mr. Durham, you're aware of Donald Trump's public statements along the lines of, hey, Russia, if you're listening, hack Hillary's emails, you'll be richly rewarded by the press. You aware of that? I'm aware of that. And are you aware that Mueller found that hours after he made that plea for Russian help, the Russians, in fact, tried to hack one of the email servers affiliated with the Clinton campaign or family? Uh, if that happened, I'm not aware of that. I mean, it could very you're, well. You're, you're not aware no. of that in the Mueller report? Um, so when you say it, you're not just, aware of evidence of collusion in the Mueller report, it's because apparently haven't read the Mueller report very well, um, if you're not aware of that fact. But let me ask you about something else. Sure. Don Jr., when offered dirt as part of what was described as a Russian government effort to help the Trump campaign, said, if it's what you say, I love it. 
Would you call that an invitation to get Russian help with dirt on Hillary Clinton? The words speak for themselves, I suppose. I, I think they do. And in fact, he said, especially late in summer. Late in summer was around when the Russians started to dump the stolen emails, wasn't it? Late in the summer, there was information that was um, disclosed by WikiLeaks um, in mid to late July. I think there had been some in June, and then there was maybe some later in October. October, was it? I think, but I don't, don't hold me to those dates. And, and this gets to the receipt of help, the second thing I mentioned, receiving Russian help. The dumping of those emails, by the way, just as forecast by what Papadopoulos told the Australian diplomat, that is that the Russians would help by leaking dirt anonymously through cutouts like WikiLeaks and DC leaks. I don't think that's but, exactly what he told the, the Australians, but... Well, he said that the, he was informed that the Russians could help by anonymously re releasing this information, right? Release what? By, anonymous, uh, by anonymously releasing information damaging to Hillary Clinton, right? Yeah, I mean, I think if you read what's in the cable and what's in the report, is that what the uh, diplomats uh, reported was there was a suggestion of a suggestion that the Russians could help. They had damaging information as to Mrs. Clinton. Um, and by releasing it anonymously, release. right? And that's exactly what happened, isn't it? I, I, don't, I don't You really don't know? I'm, I'm not sure exactly. When you say exactly what happened. Well, the Russians the released that... stolen emails mm -hmm. through cutouts, did they not? There were emails. So it's a very simple question. Did they release WikiLeaks. information, stolen information through cutouts, yes or no? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. That you really what, don't what, know the answer to that? The answer is yes. There it is. Jim Jordan's done. There, there are at least reports that Kevin McCarthy wants to kill this committee. That he's going to remove Jim Jordan from all his committee leaderships. Because he keeps on embarrassing him. Not that McCarthy uh, disagrees with what Jim Jordan's doing, but he feels he's embarrassing him while doing it. And Donald Trump is also humiliated. Because again, this went badly. This is not just going badly for Trump. At, going into this hearing, we knew Trump was guilty, but this brought up new and rehashed info on Trump's criminal traitorous ties to Russia and to elements of Russian society. Trump's done. And so is Jimmy Boy. Anyone that tries to defend Trump right now is going to end up in prison with him or at the very least end up with their career in the dumpster.